the chief of the general staff of the Polish army, General Kukula, reported after a meeting of uh, the country's National Security Bureau that a Russian missile did indeed cross Polish airspace. This happened during a massive attack of Russian missiles and drones on Ukraine. At this time, the forces of Poland's air defenses were put on high alert. As is known, Russian missiles have uh, not for the first time ended up on the territory of countries neighboring Ukraine. But now Poland's reaction is more prompt and harsh than during previous incidents. The country's president, uh, Andrzej Duda, convened a meeting of the National Security Bureau and also had a telephone conversation with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Of course, in Warsaw they do not claim that it was a programmed act of Russian aggression. But the fact that during the bombardment of Ukraine Russian missiles can end up in the airspace of neighboring countries, it is seen to be absolutely obvious to everyone. And the fact that the missile did not lead to explosions and damage on the territory of Poland, it can be called a lucky case. Another time there might be absolutely different, much more tragic consequences of the Russian missile entering the airspace of a country neighboring Ukraine. In this regard, the spokesman of the Ukrainian air forces, Yuri Ignat, who called uh, the entry of Russian missiles into Polish airspace a signal to allies that they should continue to support Ukraine and strengthen the, its air defense system, he's absolutely right. Because we already see that uh, not on slogans, but in reality, Ukraine is uh, protecting neighboring countries from possible aggressive uh, actions of the Russian Federation and the problems with the Ukrainian air defense system, as we found out today, are becoming the real problems for countries neighboring Ukraine. In addition, I would not rule out that the entry of Russian missile into the airspace of Poland or previously Romania is an element of Russia's hybrid war with the North Atlantic Alliance. Obviously, Russia cannot afford to directly bombing. Poland or Romania, nor can it afford real conflict with the North Atlantic Alliance, both because it involves conflict with the bloc that has uh, nuclear weapons, and because in Russia they understand perfectly well that the military capabilities of NATO cannot be compared with the real military ca capabilities of the Russian Federation's armed forces. However, uh, Vladimir Putin has never wanted a real war with the alliance. But he is uh, a great specialist in hybrid warfare. As we know from his actions in recent years and the operations he carried out against NATO member countries, especially against Central European countries, we are con convinced uh, that Russia's hybrid war against such countries as Poland and uh, Baltic countries can only expand. Let's remember at least the use of uh, migrants in this hybrid war first from the territory of Belarus against uh, Poland and the Baltic countries and later from the territory of uh, Russia against the Finns. As for the missiles, it is obvious that the situation may be uh, related both to the accident and to the fact that uh, the Russian aggressor simply did not cal calculate correctly the trajectory of this missile which was supposed to destroy some target in the Lviv region or just intimidate the residents of this Ukrainian region. Because we do not fully understand the ultimate goal of Vladimir Putin during these massive bombings. Whether it is about the destruction of specific targets on Ukrainian territory or just about terror that should signal to Ukrainians that Russia will continue the destruction under any condition. But there may be an absolutely different option. Russia is just filling out the reaction of countries to its action. If it crosses their airspace or if its servicemen or saboteurs cross the state borders of Russian Federation with NATO member countries. And thus this tactic of small steps should accustom NATO countries to the fact that they can be at any moment under Russian attack, precisely from the point of view of hybrid warfare and problems that may arise for the residents of border territories. So, why does Vladimir Putin need this?
first of all, for a political purpose, to strengthen the actions of those politicians who will convince that it is necessary to seek understanding with uh, the Russian Federation, that confrontation with Russia is dangerous precisely because it will endanger peaceful life for the residents of uh, territories that have a border either with the Russian Federation itself or with countries that are at war with Russia or the Belarus. And uh, obviously, as the war of attrition with Ukraine continues, Russia would like positions of these political forces in different countries to be strengthened. And the uh, accidental arrival of missiles became another important argument for finding ways to make Ukraine capitulate, even if it is called negotiations that will end uh, the war. And uh, examples are not very hard to find. The Polish Confederations, uh, representatives of which are known for their pro-Russian sentiments, has already created real problems for the Ukrainian economy with the support for the carrier strike. Activists of uh, this strike checked uh, trailers even with military cargo, which of course created real conditions for the Russian special services to find out about the contents of uh, containers and uh, they could react quickly, which would have been hard to imagine a few months before the start uh, of uh, this so-called non-political protest. So Russia continues to work in NATO countries, in Central European countries, and they are looking for political forces to support. They are looking for those who are ready to cooperate with, with it and looking for arguments for these people in their political activity. This is also part of uh, Russia's war with the civilized world, uh, with uh, all people of goodwill and uh, not just uh, accident appearance of a missile in Polish airspace. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and uh, Slava Ukraini!